And welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I have my brother Emil. Welcome, bro. Thank you. Um, we actually have a pretty interesting session today, an episode. We're going to be talking about mental health and the yep. Christian um, and the way that Christians are to respond or how we are called to respond um, based on, you know, what God's word says, yeah. how we are called to respond to certain mental issues. So um, we had a bit of a discussion earlier, and I think it's really, um, it's really a, an important thing because mm. in this day and age, whether it's because of over-medication or whether it's because of a greater awareness of it, we have a lot of Christians who are being diagnosed with certain issues, whether it's um, chronic depression, anxiety, whether it's you know ADHD, any yep. kind of neurodivergency, right? Yeah. Um, and how we are supposed to respond to it. Mm. Um, and this is kind of where my background is in, like in counseling and therapy yep. and and the different methodologies and how we're supposed to respond to mental hysteria, mental issues, mental yep. um, dysfunction. Um, and I mean, like, look, the reality of life is that each and every one of us, there's something wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's something wrong where no one is perfect. And like we were saying earlier, this is a result of the fall. Yeah. I mean, what Adam and Eve did in their disobedience, they didn't just bring physical turmoil into the world. They brought mental, emotional, psychological turmoil and dysfunction because of the sin. Mm -hmm. But we we're also talking about the fact that in the cross and what Christ has done is he's looking at a restoration. So yeah. this is the hope. The hope is Absolutely. for any of us who are suffering from mental dysfunction, mental health issues, mm -hmm. we look at Christ his work on the cross is working at restoring us. Yeah. Um, you look at uh, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down on green pastures. He leads me beside still yeah. waters. And what's that next part? He restores my soul. Mm -hmm. Right. And he goes on to say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no, no evil. evil. And that's what a lot of mental um, dysfunction that's where it leads you it leads you in this valley of the shadow of death absolutely and Emil you were talking to me just earlier about some anxiety issues that you were struggling with um, yeah. in your life and how it felt like that you were in this dark pit in this dark despair right yeah do you want to did you feel comfortable sharing a little bit about that absolutely yeah. um so first and foremost I think we should be very clear to say that we're not saying that these conditions do not exist. Oh, no, they exist. Yeah. They exist. And where our heart goes out to you, if you are um, going through that, or if you have a family or loved one that's going through that, um, our, heart go our heart goes out to you. And um, I think maybe we'll pray for the people that are suffering at the end. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We can do that. Um, yeah. But what I went through was I, I had a, a time period where uh, I believe I was 18 when I first started realizing um, started feeling it, but I didn't realize what was wrong. I just felt like I was breathless. Mm -hmm. I felt like I had like adrenaline, like this adrenaline rush, but I didn't know, I didn't understand it. So I just kind of played it off, but it got worse and worse. By the time I was 20, um, you somewhere like still having like panic attacks and things like that. I had a, a yeah. full on anxiety attack where the difference is anxiety attack. You feel like you're going to die. Whereas panic attack, you panic, but you don't think you're going to die. Mm. So I felt like I was dying. I genuinely thought this was going to be my last day on earth. Mm. Um, yeah, I ended up going to the emergency room. They checked my heart, checked everything. They said, you're perfectly fine. It's all in your head. Mm. And at that point, I realized I had, they told me I had an anxiety attack. And unfortunately, for the next six months, it felt like I was in a living nightmare. Mm. I, I wouldn't, I wasn't able to control my breathing. I'd kind of, have this moment where it's like I'm panicking to the point where I feel like I'm going to die. Mm. And it was, it was horrible. It was a horrible six months. And then slowly after six months, I started kind of getting back in control of my breathing, my, my, my self. And, um, yeah. And I kind of slowly got better, but I'd still have maybe once every week an anxiety attack mm. and a really bad one. And, um, it took me a while, I'm talking about years, to, to get to the point where I am now where I don't have anxiety attacks anymore. Yeah. Just before I even get to that point, I just 
disregard like it just get it out of like out of my mind it's it's not something that affects me anymore because mm. i i acknowledge that i do have that but it's it's not something that i want in my life so i just cast it aside mm. it's 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 hard to be in control of your brain it's very hard but i i managed to do that by concentrating on something else it's when you kind of put it in the back of your mind and because it's just it's something that just takes over your life and if you let it mm. and it's very hard to get in control of yourself and not let it and the only way i managed to do that is through the, the grace of jesus christ mm. that's yeah that's i was going to mm. kind of um ask that question mm. would you say that there's kind of a differential between when you were 18 and now in your present state because of your faith in christ absolutely do you think that's been a uh that's kind of been Driving the improving factor. Yeah. factor. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, without Jesus Christ, without where, if I wasn't where I'm at right now in my life, a lot of things that happened to me would have made me spiral mm. and get to the point where I'm not in control anymore. It's just when I kind of let go of the wheel of control, and yeah. I just said, Lord, I'll do what I need to do. Or like in a fleshly way, like, I'll go to work, I'll do what's needed of me. But everything else that's not in my control, I leave to you. Amen. Everything that's not in my control, I know I don't need to worry about it anymore because why would I when I have the greatest father in, in the world? Why would I need to worry about what's gonna happen tomorrow? What's what are people thinking of me? Mm. What are, what what is doesn't matter to me. And it took it took a while for me to get that to that point where it's like nothing matters to me like the opinions of people to a certain extent of course of course yeah. but like ultimately it's all superficial mm. all that truly matters is the opinion of my father in heaven that's what's going to matter at the end at the end of the day your opinion of me the people that are watching his opinions of me is temporary mm -hmm. they can hate me they can love me they can think of me as the worst person on earth but it's temporary because eventually they're going to have their last breath so will i i'll be forgotten they'll be forgotten yeah but Jesus Christ will never be forgotten. That's a, that's, eternal. That's a really good perspective to have. Um, I wanted to kind of mm. mesh that out a little because what we kind of wanted to talk about, we don't, because as Christians, we don't disregard that there are mental issues or chemical yeah. imbalances or, you know, uh, uh, lack of either serotonin or an elevation in cortisol. You know, mm -hmm. we know that there are certain things that happen in the brain that it's beyond the control of of, man. of people in most yeah. cases some of it is drug induced some of it can be um tr caused or Trauma. by traumatic uh, mm. triggers or whatnot but mm. these things happen in the brain and it's out of our control yeah who better to deal with it than the one who created the brain yeah. who better to deal with the the matters of the soul and the emotion and the psychology than the one who created it Amen. so christianity is not against psychology no christianity is probably the 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 driving force of giving psychology any meaning because mm -hmm. it's the study of the psyche the psyche is the soul it's the, yeah. the mind right um god made the soul he's looking at restoring it through christ in our glorification there will be a perfect restoration yeah. but even in this life it is god who sustains it is god who is saying i'm your father if you're yeah. if you're in him he's your father right so you're talking to us a little bit about your situation god being your father as a believer he's taking care of you in in the word it says cast all your cares and your anxiety upon him because he cares for you Amen. right in matthew 6 jesus talks about the whole issue of anxiety mm. um and i'm not saying this just you know to you this is yep. not a counseling session but like for for all people who are you know, who suffering. are believers and who are suffering from anxiety, even if you're not a believer, mm -hmm. have a look at what Jesus writes here. All right. Now, Jesus is speaking these words on the Sermon of the Mount, his most famous message and uh, sermon. And look what he writes. He writes, he says, sorry. Um, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, mm -hmm. nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? 
So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field and how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory was arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need all of these things. But for you, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. This is the aspect of the comparison and contrasting factors between secular psychology and Christian psychology. So Christian therapy, the way that we counsel, the way that we deal with mental issues versus the way the world will deal with it. You know, we yeah. have we have, you know, Freudian or today neo Freudian psychology mm -hmm. or Freudian Freud was kind of considered the father, grandfather of modern psychology. Mm -hmm. He was very, very secular in the way he thought. He was very yeah. antagonistic to the things of God in the way that he theorized the way the brain works and the way you deal with it so he had his psychosexual development and mm -hmm. pretty much all your issues are because you're sexually repressed so the the solution is don't be sexually repressed go as, have as much unabashed sex as possible mm -hmm. with whoever you want don't let your desires be ungratified yeah that's so damaging to the soul right so that's the way freud looked at it these days it's kind of a lot more subtle but it kind of leads in that direction because a lot of secular counseling and secular methodologies it looks at kind of masking the symptoms and just letting you be free and happy but that causes more yeah. long-term damage absolutely right? so it becomes anthropocentric so how can you live your happiest and most joyful life yeah. rather than give your life meaning? I think, I think that's the whole problem with today. Everyone's chasing happiness. Everyone's mm. chasing this idea of pleasure and, and not just pleasure in horrible things. It could be even in good things. It's just like, for example, making enough money to buy your family the things you want. It doesn't have to be greed. Like, no, no, yeah. It doesn't have to be selfish. It can even be a non-selfish thing. But ultimately... This happiness is temporary because eventually you're going to have a very, very bad day. Mm. Eventually you're going to have a very, very bad week. Yeah. It's not a matter of will it happen, is when will it happen. Yeah. And when you're only chasing happiness and that's what makes you... That's what, force, yeah, that's, yeah, that's what is you know, uh, detrimental to whether your day is good or bad. Mm then you're setting yourself up for failure. And you're going to have a lot of bad days. You're going to have a lot of bad days. But when that's not what your life is about, that's not, it's about, my life is about pleasing God. That's yeah. my main goal. Yeah. If you have a bad day because of, you know, um, you, you lost your job, your stocks went down, whatever it is, right? If that's not what drives you, if that's not what your goal is, ultimately, even if you are sick and yeah. you've lost a loved one, you've, had a horrible 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 week mm. ultimately that's not what your hope yeah and your goals are your goal is for the next kingdom yeah. so you lost your loved one but the loved one had accepted christ yeah, yeah. So, so i'm sad but ultimately i'm not in this you know um abyss like i'm not in this pit of darkness where i feel like there's no light no i'm i'm in i feel like i'm in a dark place but i see the light which is jesus mm. I'm in a dark place because I lost a loved one. That's a fact. I'm going to miss this person for a certain time. I know that. But I have hope in Jesus Christ and in the kingdom to come. And I know that that person is waiting for me there because I have faith in Christ. Yeah. That he saved that person. And that's where my hope is. That's where my happiness is. It's not in here. It's not in what I make. It's in Jesus. And that's never going to go away. So why are you putting your happiness in temporary things? Mm. It's, it's not about striving for temporary happiness. It's about striving about making our Father proud mm. of us. And an and eternal <clears throat> intimacy with God, mm -hmm. which is where joy, eternal joy, is. comes from. Yeah. So this is one of the things when, when we look at the Word of God, it's talking about the peace that surpasses understanding mm -hmm. coming upon your mind. 
even in the in spite of any mental health issues which a lot of christians face yeah i mean there are christians i was speaking to you earlier about it um some of you guys know who charles spurgeon is one of the he's called the prince of preachers yeah. he had chronic depression so he had imbalances in his brain there his his serotonin serotonin development was short um he just didn't find the the because of the chemical imbalance he didn't find happiness right so there was no happiness he was depressed he was chronically depressed felt in dark despair and yet he did more for the kingdom than most people will ever do in their lives mm -hmm. right and it's because he looked at the word of god and he said my joy is in god even if in this life i feel like i'm in despair or in a pit yeah he was looking to christ by faith and so because of that he had a lot better days than bad absolutely right i that mean he mean had he, he wasn't had, like for example if they still checked his brain he was still no no he depressed. had the chemical imbalance that's the yeah. thing and and back then we they weren't as psychologically or medically advanced as we mm -hmm. are today um with drugs and pharmaceuticals and whatnot but his faith was in christ and he clung mm -hmm. And he held on to Christ the same way you were saying that you you did and you are at the moment. Yeah. That's where our hope is. Because here's the thing. The difference between the methodologies when we talk about secular, the secular methodology looks at drawing strength from you as a person inside of you. All right. Mm -hmm. So that's what positive psychology is all about. Yeah. It's like, let's dig deep in your soul and find every good quality and every strength you have and then draw that out and then make your life better. Yeah. That's not the Christian message. And that's not the way we respond to it either. And I'll be honest with you, it works temporarily. Temporarily. As right. long as you are having your good day and you have that yeah. strength. And look, and it's and this this is the same if you have an addiction problem, if you mm -hmm. have whatever it is, you you can do it by yourself on a good day. Yeah. But it's when do people relapse? Yeah. It's not on the, when they're having their amazing when day. Having the... It's it's when it's when you're at your worst. That's when addiction comes yeah. knocking at your door. That's when your depression, anxiety knocks on your door, yeah. and you're not ready. That's where if we rely on our own strength, we're gonna fail. Yeah. That's why we have to rely on Christ. And that's why we have to surround ourselves with Christian brothers and sisters. Because mm -hmm. I, I know a lot of Christians are spreading this this idea. Because even I'm guilty of it. Oh, we don't need to go to church. It's not about the building. It's about having fellowship with Christians who can support us. And when we fall mm -hmm. down, we kind of... We're not seeing Christ because of our problems. And it feels like the waves are crashing into us. And we feel weak. We can kind of rely on our brothers and sisters in Christ to help us up. And to lead us back to the cross again. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to surround ourselves with Christian brothers and sisters. Yeah. It's to help us on our bad days when we feel weak. Keep you accountable. Keep you strong. Absolutely. If you Pray for you. Encourage yeah. you. If you surround yourself with evil and you, you're having a good day and you and your good day, you're like, I don't want it. I don't want it. But you're surrounded by it, but you still can fight it. But when you're, on the, when you're having a bad day and you're surrounded by evil. Yeah. I guarantee you, you're gonna fall. Yeah, yeah. it's it's you, you've set yourself up for failure. This is this is where the we're talking about the contrast and differential between mm -hmm. the secular and the the Christian, the spiritual. We we talk mm -hmm. about the Word of God because we talk about the anthropocentric centric yeah. model. Sorry, that looks at what's inside you, all your yeah. strength, bring it out, and yeah. use that to improve yourself. Yeah. Right. Now, we talk about that even with people who are not mentally ill or have mm -hmm. anything. They can still use that method and there can be results, right? Yeah. But those results are temporary. They're not eternal. Yeah. It's not something that's, that's giving you good meaning. Mm. It's not something that's giving you an eternal purpose. So the Christian model is theocentric. Yeah, absolutely. So the Christian model is saying, okay, we don't deny the mental issues. We don't deny that there are things that are going on in your brain. There are neurodivergencies. There are issues. We don't deny that. Mm. Right? We understand science. In fact, most of these scientific methodologies and the scientific process were developed by people who were God-fearing yeah. because they wanted to understand God's creation. So we don't mm. deny what science says. What we say is... And there's, it's funny because there's a lot of evidence-based science to actually validate the Christian claim to it. Yeah. Um, that when 
the first commandment that Christ gave is what the the summary of the law is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. mind, heart, soul, strength. Right? He uh, in Deuteronomy, it's the ship. You know, it's the love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Now that's the theocentric model. That's the model that says, all right, I'm going to put myself on the 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 bench yeah. for a little. I'm going to look to Everyone the things of God. Else, yeah. I'm going to look to how I can serve God. I'm going to yeah. look to how I can serve my neighbor, how I can serve yeah. my brothers and sisters. Right? You notice that when you put less of your focus on your ego and yourself, you actually start to feel a bit better. Yeah, because that's not what it's about. It's about everything else. It's about Jesus and everyone else. Right. I put them first and yeah. then me, I'm just in the background. So if you're in the background, you're not thinking about. It doesn't mean they're not that your problems don't exist. They're there, but they're at the back of your mind. You just. But so here's here's they're the, not important. Here's the model. Here's the model here, though. The idea is, if you do this, you're looking at Christ. You're looking to His mm -hmm. service of His kingdom. Mm -hmm. You're looking to the service of your neighbor and to love them. Mm -hmm. You're the neighbor of someone else. They're gonna so love you. someone else who is a believer who loves God will love you absolutely that's right? why you have to surround yourself with those people exactly yeah and so this is where we talk about de developing community developing relationships with believers yeah developing a relationship with god an intimate one because Amen. he cares for you he does. so he's like don't worry about focusing on yourself so much and loving yourself and having your space mm. i'm doing that i'm taking care of you you mm. worry about the things of God, the kingdom of heaven, everything yes. else will be added unto you. Like we just read, yeah. seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added. He cares about your mind. He cares about your soul. He cares about your psychology. He cares about your mental health issues. And the word of God says, cast your burdens on him. Let him deal with it Amen. and he'll take care of you. Now, a lot of people are going to be like, well, that's a really simplistic view and yeah. you don't understand all the issues. I understand the issues. Right. Um, this is not something that is a lack of knowledge. It's yeah. actually because we've gained experience and we understand what the word of God says and we understand what the science says. Yeah. Right. The science actually talks about when you when you focus less on yourself and the things of yourself and you look to how you can f um, support the needs of others. You start to feel more of a sense of. A, uh, responsibility you find more of a sense of meaning more of a sense of purpose and you and end up you feel this, more fulfilled yeah you feel like and when i say pride i don't mean an egotistical pride i mean more like an honor of pride mm. like you have a sense of higher self-esteem because yeah. you feel like you're valued in something greater than yourself mm -hmm. you feel like you have a purpose that's greater than who you are or yeah. ever will be you have this sense of superiority not as in again not an egotistical like selfish narcissistic way but in a very pure yeah and amazing and beautiful and like a it's it's it's, it's like a, a knight clad in golden shiny armor and mm. and they're seen as like this symbol of justice it's not that they're prideful no no on the contrary they serve everyone and that's why they looked up that's why people look up to them and and that's how you feel yeah. you feel like you're helping people and you're selfless and and yeah it, it's it's not a again it's not a prideful thing it's it's a good pride mm. it's a honor-based pride it's 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 knowing that your life is more than just the temporary yeah. it's knowing that your life you have a greater purpose yeah you have a greater purpose one that's going to transition into an eternal <clears throat> life in into an eternal realm yeah all right um and this is where like a lot of people have existential despair because mm. they're taught because of our naturalistic kind of worldview in our yeah. culture and in our society and this might be where you're at those of you who are watching you might have this existential crisis because you're like this is all there is mm. once i die that's it it's I'm done gone. and so there's so much anxiety and even depression tied into that thought mm. And so because of that worldview, we've seen a rise in, in the secular world. We've seen a rise in anxiety and depression in yeah. the most atheistic countries. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Let's look at it from their point of view. Yeah. Let, let's, let's, let's just make an assumption. Let's assume that they are right. There is nothing after this. Mm. 
You don't have a house because yeah. you can't afford a house because of the prices today. Yeah. You never probably you never will afford a house. So you're gonna die having not nothing to give to your kins. you know kins. Yeah. Uh, you got no, nothing to your name. You'll be forgotten. And if you are remembered, you'll be remembered as someone that was useless mm -hmm. in society at least. And that's scary. Yeah. That's I mean that's depressing, frightening. You die that. unknown. You die a meaningless death. A meaningless death. Death. You live a meaningless life. You didn't really help anyone that much. You didn't mm. do anything. You just another face that yeah. will be forgotten eventually. That's scary and that's depressing. Yeah. But that's not the truth. It's far from it. Thank God that's not the truth. Thank God there's more to yeah. it than that. You are loved. Thank you God are, there's a God that cares for you. Yeah. You are the creation of the Most High. The triune God of the Bible. He created you for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And He wants you to serve that purpose. But you're not doing that right now. And maybe, maybe you, you feel like you were at one point, but now you're further from it. And now you see like where you are now. It's, it's not good. It's just, it feels like you're on this selfish island. Yeah. And you're not nowhere near where God wants you to be. But it's not the end. So long as you still have breath in your lungs, it's not yeah. over. Go back to Christ. Go back to the cross. And if, you're not, if you haven't been there before, come to the cross. And you will have purpose, a greater purpose. And you will have things that will never ever satisfy, sorry, things that will satisfy you forever. Not like things here that never satisfy. Mm. It will be things that are eternally good. Not something temporary, something that can be destroyed, something that can rust and the moths can destroy. Mm. It will be permanent. Amen. And that, we're, coming, we're coming to the end of the episode mm. here. Um, I actually think it's so vitally important because yeah. you know, I did my undergraduate in therapies and counseling and these methodologies. And so I understand the issues very well. But one of the things that is concerning, it's disconcerting to me, See, secular psychology and secular counseling, it's humanistic. So yeah. it looks at, you know, the humans being pretty much the be all and end all. And there's really nothing transcendental. There's nothing yeah. beyond us. That idea. So this idea of positive psychology and this idea of the, the secular methodologies, they've creeped into the church repackaged as Christian counseling or Christian psychology rather than actually be it being actually biblical yeah. counseling. The Bible has a lot to say about the mind. It has a lot to say about the soul. It has a lot to say about your emotions. Yeah. It has a lot to say about the way that we are ought to respond to mental health. Mm -hmm. And one of the issues in the church is that we've adopted the secular style. Yeah. And this is what we're feeding to the younger generation. Yeah. So we, we've talked about it. A, uh, a while back you know that's kind of given rise to things like the prosperity gospel and mm -hmm. you know the whole living your best life now kind of style of preaching and teaching which we would look at that as anti-gospel um, rather than being let's be a kingdom seeking people in spite of the mental health issues let's pray for one another and encourage one another and lead you to Christ yeah. and counsel you biblically Amen. rather than secularly yeah. and i think that's something that we're missing mm -hmm. because if we use the world styles of style of counseling if we use the world's methodologies we're going to get the world's results yeah and the result of the world and the things of the world death and destruction in the long term we don't want that that's right what we want is something lasting something permanent a yeah. permanent joy a permanent peace a permanent um, happiness so to speak Amen. and that's only with our eternal God Amen. that's only with understanding the way that our God has wired us he's wired us to be in community all right with him and with the body of believers True. he's wired us to be a people who are pursuing um, the kingdom all right so if we're not communing with God if we're not communing with his people if we're not seeking his kingdom that has devastating results on your psyche, on your 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 mental health, yeah. 
right? In spite of any imbalance. And I guarantee, even if there is any, like I know autistic kids, I know Down syndrome kids, I know, and adults, I know people with some, with even schizophrenia, right? Who are seeking the kingdom of God, who have come to him and are living lives that would just put us to shame, right? Sure. In spite of it, because yeah. they're living for Christ. You know, you can still come to Christ and Christ can still be the one who's restoring you mm -hmm. and sustain you in spite of any mental health yeah. issue you have. And so I, I think we should probably um, leave it there. Is there anything else, like one last thing you kind of want to encourage the listeners and the audience? Um, well, I just want to say we will pray for you after this podcast is over. Definitely. For everyone that's listening. Definitely. Um, and uh, just know that you do matter, that no matter what you're going through, if you leave it in the hands of Christ, He will take care of everything. Mm. Okay? Just put your faith in Christ and put your faith in someone that's greater than your problems, greater than your circumstances, greater than your brain, than your imbalances, greater than anything. Put your faith in Christ mm. and He will He will restore you. Yeah. He's the creator. He's the resolver. Amen. He's the one who's going to work all things for those who love Him. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Bless and um, we'll see you next time. Take care.